This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Some fat men carry their weight like a weakness, a sign of self-indulgence and sloth. Other fat men absorb mass regally, an outward sign of their growing power. Simon Augustino Cardinal Lourdesami was of the latter category, a huge man, a veritable mountain of scarlet in his formal cardinal robes. Lourdesami looked to be in his late fifties, standard, and had appeared thus for more than two centuries of active life and successful resurrection. Jowled, quite bald, and given to speaking in a soft bass rumble that could rise to a god roar capable of filling St. Peter's Basilica without the use of a speaker system, Lord Asami remained the epitome of health and vitality in the Vatican. Many in the inner circles of the Church's hierarchy credited Lord Asami, then a young minor functionary in the Vatican diplomatic machine, with guiding the anguished and pain-ridden ex-Hyperion pilgrim, Father Lenar Hoyt, to finding the secret that tamed the cruciform to an instrument of resurrection. They credited him as much as the newly deceased Pope with bringing the Church back from the brink of extinction. Whatever the truth of that legend, Lord Asami was in fine form this first day after the Holy Father's ninth death in office and five days before His Holiness's resurrection. As Cardinal Secretary of State, President of the committee overseeing the twelve sacred congregations, and prefect of that most feared and misunderstood of those agencies, the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, now officially known once again after more than a thousand year interregnum as the Holy Office of the Universal Inquisition. Lord Asami was the most powerful human being in the Curia. At that moment, with His Holiness Pope Julius the Fourteenth lying in state in St. Peter's Basilica, the body awaiting removal to the resurrection annex as soon as night should fall. Simon Augustino Cardinal Lourdesami was arguably the most powerful human being in the galaxy. The fact was not lost on the Cardinal that morning. Are they here yet, Lucas? He rumbled at the man who had been his aide and factotum for more than two hundred busy years. Monsignor Lucas Ode was as thin, bony, aged-looking and urgent in his movements, as Cardinal Lourdesami was huge, fleshy, ageless and languid. Ode's full title as Under-Secretary of State for the Vatican was Substitute and Secretary of the Cipher, but he was usually known as the Substitute. Cipher might have been an equally apt nickname for the tall, angular Benedictine administrator, for in the twenty-two decades of smooth service he had given his master, no one, not even Lord Dusami himself, knew the man's private opinions or emotions. Father Lucas Ode had been Lord Dusami's strong right arm for so long that the secretary cardinal had long since ceased to think of him as anything but an extension of his own will. They have just been seated in the innermost waiting room, answered Monsignor Odi. Cardinal Lourdesami nodded. For more than a thousand years, since long before the hegira that had sent humankind fleeing the dying earth and colonizing the stars, it had been a custom of the Vatican to hold important meetings in the waiting rooms of important officials rather than in their private offices. Secretary of State Cardinal Lourdesami's innermost waiting room was small, no more than five meters square, and unadorned, except for a round marble table with no inset comm units, a single window that, if it had not been polarized to opaqueness, would have looked out onto a marvelously frescoed external loggia, and two paintings by the thirtieth-century genius Caro Tan, one showing Christ's agony in Gethsemane, the other showing Pope Julius, in his pre-papal identity of Father Lenar Hoyt, receiving the first cruciform from a powerful but androgynous-looking archangel, while Satan, in the form of the Shrike, looked on powerlessly. The four people in the waiting room, three men and a woman, represented the executive council of the Pan-Capitalist League of Independent Catholic Transstellar Trade Organizations. 
more commonly known as the Pax Mercantilis.